So, why are we here today? You're here to watch me talk about HTTP messages and PSR7. So, PSR7 is standardized HTTP message interfaces. So, it's a modern way of dealing with HTTP in PHP. It's hard to pronounce. A lot of P's, T, T, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to pronounce. Who am I? My name is Hannes. And now, next slide um, is a description of me in four emoji. I'm a Belgian, I'm a runner, and I do uh, software development. I work for a company called madewithlove.be. We make things with love. <laughs> we use PHP and JavaScript, etc. Uh, we have a, a team of about 20 people over four different continents, including Brazil, uh, Canada, uh, Kenya, and Europe. So it's a really cool uh, company. If you want to check it out, madewithlove.be. So PSR7. Uh, anyone went to uh, yesterday's talk about the fig, PHP fig? Okay, good. So we know what PSRs are. It's PHP standard recommendation, am I right? Okay. So PSR 7 is number 7 of those uh, recommendations, and it's about common interfaces for HTTP messages. Uh, this chapter uh, this chapter, this talk, will be divided into three chapters. The first one is, what is this PSR? What are these interfaces? What do they include? The second one is Guzzle, my favor favorite HTTP client. And the third chapter will be about more usages of PSR 7 throughout your applications today, how you can start using it. So let's get it started with the first chapter, PSR HTTP message. It's common interfaces for HTTP messages. Without HTTP, we wouldn't be here. Our jobs include uh, writing HTTP clients, using it, uh, writing HTTP applications and servers and stuff. So HTTP messages is all what this talk is about. Uh, it's common, which means it should work, or these interfaces should work in any framework, whether that's Laravel, Cake, Yi, Symfony, whatever framework you should be able to use these interfaces inside any PHP application. Um, these messages, uh, responses, requests, should work for both HTTP clients and HTTP servers. So uh, it's common for both, both, both sides of the HTTP protocol. Also, it's version independent. It should work with version 1.0, 1.1, and 2. something, and every future version. Also, there are interfaces. The PSR defines interfaces. It doesn't include implementations. You can choose whatever implementation there is out there. So what did we do before PSR 7? We would use Symfony HTTP Foundation, or most of us would use it. Uh, these include request and response objects, uh, but not interfaced. There's just class request, and then the static function create from globals all in one big ass uh, request object. So that's not very useful to re yeah, reuse it or decouple from it. So we cannot type into interfaces. Um, what else is different with PSR7 request and response objects is that they are immutable. Who knows what immutability is? Good, I see a lot of hands. So immutability will. Um, states that an object will never change state. If you call a method on it, it may return uh, an attribute value, like get header, it will return a header. But if you want to change the request object, if you want a new object with a different state, then you would have to call with header method. This with header method will return a new request object with a changed, changed state uh, and the original request object will remain the same. So if you var dump these two request objects, it will return false. Or if you var dump the strict comparison of these objects. So let's take a look. I will open up my favorite IDE, which is PHP Storm. Um, and I will show you some of the interfaces. So a request and a response both have a body and headers. So it's pretty useful to have a combined interface uh, or a parent interface for both these 
uh, interfaces, which is the message interface right here. Can you see it? Is it clear? In the back? I might zoom in a bit. So this message interface. It does have a few methods like get protocol version, get headers, has header, uh, get body, which is common for both the request and response object. So if we go look at the response interface, we will see that there's an added get status code and get reason phrase. If our HTTP response is sent back to the client or the user agent, whatever you want to call it, it has a status code, whether that's 200 OK or 403 unauthorized, um, 418 I am a teapot. That's a status code and a reason phrase. So that's it for the response object, response interface. But there's also the request interface. And the request, request interface has, this is not clear, right, in the back? Um, it has a get method and a get URI. We can get a certain string, which is the URI, and send it off to the server. The ser server will decide what to do with it. This is something that only the request has, not the, uh, not the response. This request interface is also extended by the server request interface. And this has methods to, um, to get a lot of data about the dollar underscore server values and dollar underscore files and attributes and cookies. Uh, all of those methods are included in the server request interface so that you don't have to uh, peek into the super globals. We don't do that anymore. Um, if we go back to the message interface, it also has a get body method. And this get body method will return a stream, a stream interface object. I just told you that every of these uh, objects are immutable. This one is the exception. The stream interface has a couple of methods like seek, uh, rewind, write, is readable. Those are, um, yeah, the objects that implement these are not immutable. This is the only exception in this package. Let's go back to the slides. So uh, as a recap, there's a message interface, which is both a parent for the request and response. Uh, the request has another uh, child interface, which is the server request interface, which allows you to access the dollar underscore get dollar underscore post, post uh, super globals. Uh, there's also the URI interface, which abstracts um, get query or get host or get scheme, whether that's HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, and there's, a, there's also the stream interface. The stream interface is for the body of the object. So now we can stream uh, HTTP uh, bodies via PHP, which is more energy efficient. Uh, energy, wow. <laughs> memory, memory efficient. Also, uh, remind that, uh, or remember that the stream interface is not immutable. So um, there's a couple of implementations of these interfaces. Uh, the most famous ones, or the most downloaded ones, are the guzzle HTTP slash PSR7 package. But there's also the um, uh, the Zen framework slash Zen Diaktoros, I'm not Greek, but that, that should be Greek. Um, that package, which includes uh, super useful helpers and factories and emitters. I will show you them later. So, um, the Guzzle package is my favorite. Uh, it's my favorite HTTP client, so I dedicated an entire chapter to this. So, what do we do to install Guzzle? We do composer require guzzle http slash guzzle. This will add something to your composer.json file inside the require block. Inside the require block, it will say uh, guzzle http slash guzzle caret 6.1, which is the current version constraint for guzzle. If we go to the packages temper checker, we can see a whole list of um, uh, tagged releases of guzzle. And we can see that uh, with the version constraint Carrot 6.1, it will install either 6.1.0 or 6.1.1. Or if a new release is tagged, anything up to 7.0.0 exclusively. 
If you want to check out this package checker, or packages semver checker, go to semver.mwl.be. Made with love, we made this. So what is new in Guzzle version 6 compared to versions older than version 6? Right now, it uses PSR7 objects, which is good. For that, it has abstracted the implementations into a different package called Guzzle HTTP slash PSR7, so you can reuse it without actually using the client, which is good. If we go look into the composer.json file of this package, we will see that it has a provides block. And in this provides block, provide block, there's PSR slash HTTP message dash implementation. If we go look on packages.org, uh, and we type in that package name, uh, we will see that it has never been downloaded before. And it has no stars. Huh? And it's a virtual package? Huh? What's that? If we click on it, on it you will see that uh, packages says, well, this package uh, is not installable. You cannot install this. But here's a couple of Im implementations available for you that you can use to actually um, fulfill this requirement of this um, uh, PSR slash uh, HTTP message implementation package. And at the top, we will see that there's Guzzle HTTP slash PSR7 and Zen Frameworks implementation. And you can see this is an old screenshot. Uh, it says 1 million downloads, but it's far beyond 3 million now. So it's the most, uh, most used implementation. So how do we use these objects? Um, previously, I showed you the interfaces. We cannot new up something which is an interface, so we need to new up an actual object. So with this implementation of the interface, we can actually new up a request. So we say new request, method, URI, headers, and body. Yes, we can have a get request with a body. Ask Elasticsearch, they do it. So we have a new request, and we can make a new HTTP client, a Guzzle client, with new Guzzle HTTP backslash client, and pass it on to the send method send this, this uh, PSR7 request object. This will return a PSR7 response object, obviously. So let's show the power of this. OK. I'm in the first demo. By the way, these demos are also available on GitHub. So I showed you before that there's also a send implementation. So basically, we can use send objects, pass them on to the send method of the client of Guzzle, and it should return a response object. It doesn't matter if it's a send object or a Guzzle object, because it's type handed as a PSR7 request and response interface object. So I have a controller, um, which I'm newing up here. I'm passing it a client a Guzzle client, and then I'm calling it with uh, controller method index. I'm passing on a request object, and it returns a response object. That's what controllers do. They get a request object, they send back a response object. Right here, we can see that there's a server request factory by Zend. Um, this factory allows us to create a new server request interface object from the super globals. It's a static method. Oh. Let me go back. It's a static method from globals, which is equal to the uh, request create from globals method from the symphony request object, but it's in a different factory, so it's more single responsible. So, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't break the single responsibility rule. And then in the end, the last line of the script is a SAPI, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's a emitter object that emits a response object. So we create a new emitter, and we pass on a PSR7 response object, and then it should output the headers, output the body. If we go look at the controller, at the controller method, there's a few lines here. Can you read this? The quality is really bad. I'm sorry for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the, the request object. I'm changing the target 
um, to api.github.com with uh, HTTPS and port 443, and then I'm updating the request object. I'm doing a request with URI, this URI, I'm, I'm getting back a new request object. That's because it's immutable. If you don't do this, it will fail. Then I'm going to use the Guzzle client, I'm going to send this PSR7 request, I will get back a response. Before passing on the response to the index.php file, I will remove some headers, the transfer encoding and content encoding. This is because uh, GitHub's API will return the object or return the re HTTP response with a chunked and a uh, zipped uh, body, and it will add those headers as well, so my client can decode them. Uh, but I'm removing that just for simplicity. So, any idea what this will do in this script? Wait. No one? It's a simple proxy script. So, anything that will uh, be captured by this script will be forwarded to GitHub's API, and then the response will be sent back. So. This is what I get from the root of this application. And if I, let's say, request repos slash symphony slash symphony, I will get a request object, a response object back with all the information of symphony repo. So that's what it does. And in the meantime, I also added something sneaky. I added some GitHub authentication. Because otherwise, if I would do this a lot of times, I would get API, um, API limit errors. Also, if you look at this in the browser tab, this is not really visible for you, but there's a lot of headers right here, uh, like the X GitHub request ID header. Those are still there. I didn't remove them. I just passed them on to my re uh, response. So it's a super simple proxy. Let's go back to my slides. <coughs> what else is new in Guzzle version 6? Promises. Anyone familiar with promises in JavaScript? OK, cool. So promises are not so new, actually. They were new since 5.0.0. But I will show you them anyway. So. Promises in Guzzle are also abstracted like the PSR7 objects into the Guzzle HTTP slash promise uh, package. So you can reuse it anytime. Um, basically, there's a couple of more methods on the client, except for send this request object. There's also send async. Send async will return your promise, which you can then manipulate to get the, uh, to get the response out of it. So you can do promise then, Give it a callback, and in the end, before your index.php script ends, you should always wait for the promise to finish, because otherwise your index.php script has ended before your response has ever come back. And in this callback, you can type in response interface. It will give you a response object, and then you can use it. So in our second demo, we will manipulate the previous example to use async calls. The index.php script exa is exactly the same. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Safety first. So we call this controller with this index method. And right here, we do send async. Send async will return a promise. We will use promise then, oops, promise then, type into response interface as the first uh, argument of the, of the callback, and then we will remove these headers, set the response in the this pro response um, attribute, and in the end, we will wait for, for the promise to resolve and res return the response. Will this work? Changing the port. And it does. We can also request some user objects, like Derek. Hi, Derek. <laughs> so we can still do the same thing, but it's async. 
I haven't uh, proved this yet, but you have to believe me. <laughs> For now, I will prove you. So, oh yeah, we can also do multiple requests. Why, why would we else do multiple, uh, do async calls if we don't do multiple at the same time? So the third demo will do multiple requests at the same time. So again, this is the same index.php file with a controller, which will take an array of GitHub usernames, and then it will fetch them all at the same time and return the response. So can I see some familiar faces? Kayla, I'm going to add you to the list, and I will fetch your user profile. So right here, I'm looping the usernames and I'm sending off a lot of requests. I'm getting an array of promises back, and with this all method, guzzle HTTP promise all method, I can pass in an array of promises, and I will get back one single promise. Um, and I can wait for this promise to be resolved, and give it a callback, which will take an array of responses. All these response objects come back in the same order as when you, like, wait, these response objects will be in the same order as the order of the promises that you entered in this all method. So that's pretty useful. And you only have to wait once for one promise, which is the global promise, right? And after that, I will create a new response, JSON encode all these profiles, add the content type application slash JSON header, and send it back to the index.php script, which will render it. Cool. Third demo. Nice. One, two, three, four user objects from the GitHub API. The first one is my boss. He has GitHub user ID 4200, which is pretty low. He was an early adopter. Derek, yours is a bit higher, but still low. Good. So we did four requests at the same time async, which is good, which is fast. Right now, you still have to believe me. I haven't uh, proved it yet. What else is new in Guzzle v6? Let's see. Before Guzzle v6, we had events, like um, the response has come back event, or uh, a progress event, uh, and those were all emitted via the emitter interface. And you could write subscribers and those would listen to these events. Um, so that is all gone, but now we have middlewares, callable middlewares. Middlewares which are, in fact, functions, anything that's callable. So a callable looks like this. It's a blob of code, and there's two lines which are important. This line says, all the requests if you want to. You can alter a request object before sending it off with curl or something uh, to, the, to, the ex, uh, to the HTTP server. Afterwards, you can alter the response you, get, you got back if you want to. You don't have to. You can do either of those, you can do none of those, or you can do both of those. Um, there's a couple of, this is a, a big pile of code. You don't want to write that yourself, there, so there's a couple of helpers. There's a middleware map request middleware, which takes a callable, which you can use to edit a request before sending it off. There's also the map response middleware, so you can edit the response before returning it back to the one who did the send method on the client. So there's also the PSR3 logger middleware, which is pretty useful, so you can output whatever request has been sent off to the server uh, to a monologue or whatever implementation of the PSR logger interface. How should you use those? Actually, um, the client, new Guzzle client, will initiate in its constructor a handler stack um, static method create. By default, this has a couple of middlewares, like a redirect middleware. If, if your response has a 302 uh, status code, it will fetch the second re request as well. 
Um, there's a couple of more like HTTP Eris middleware. So if your um, response will be a 400 something or 500 something, it will actually throw an exception. You can also leave them out as well if you want to actually uh, catch that yourself. So handler stack create will create a, a stack of middlewares, callable middlewares, and you can add to them with the push method, the unshift, or the remove method. So demo time. We will use middlewares. Index.php. Let's see. We have, again, um, an index.php file, but right now we're going to use debug bar. Anyone familiar with debug bar? Okay, it's for profiling your application and seeing what exceptions have been thrown and what uh, SQLs, uh, SQL queries have been executed and stuff. Uh, you can all always um, append to that. It also, it also has a timeline function or a timeline um, uh, data. I don't know how it's called. It's a data. I don't know. So it has a timeline so you can do some profiling. You can say this event started here and it ended here, so it took so long. Um, right here, I'm setting this up. I'm setting up the debug bar and I'm creating a new middleware, wrapping it inside a debug bar profiler object inside a middleware so we can pass on the time collector to a middleware which for every request will add a new event, a start event and an end event to, this, to that timeline. So if we do the same thing as before, we use the same controller and the same method. So we do, we loop um, a couple of usernames. Uh, we get back a, an array of promises and we resolve them all. And then we will write the output. The output is just some HTML. Yes, I write HTML inside my controller. Don't do this at home. Um, but I'm doing this to output all of the debug bar JavaScript and stuff. But basically, you would use Twig or something. So, and then I return it with content type text slash HTML. So we should see uh, an HTML with some useful data. Cool. So right here, we have three user uh, avatars, the one from Derek, my boss, and Gary Hawken. And in the bottom, we will see a debug bar, which will show us that all these requests have been executed asynchronously. The, one, the first one took 376 milliseconds, the third one also uh, in that order of magnitude, and they all executed within 409 milliseconds. If you would do them sequentially, it would take more than a second. So that's a big win. I proved to you that we can do async in PHP. Very good. Are we glad? Yeah, cool. So as a recap for this chapter, uh, we talked about what is new in PSR, uh, not PSR 6, um, but Guzzle version 6, and that uh, it uses uh, PSR 7 objects, it uses middlewares instead of events, and it can do async using promises. How am I doing in time? Is this correct? Oh yeah, I still have 30 minutes, cool. So PSR 7 usages. We can use this outside of HTTP clients as well. Uh, but let's first talk about um, older HTTP clients. A lot of people still use, or still use, uh, they use, uh, for example, a Zend1 HTTP client or a Zend2 HTTP client, or Buzz. Buzz is a different HTTP client. So what can we do to uh, provide them the ability to use PSR7 request objects to make HTTP calls to a server? Um, we can perhaps decouple from HTTP clients. So, for example, you're writing an SDK for your awesome website because you're a developer for some cool startup, like DigitalOcean. No, that's no longer a startup, but uh, 
let's say you have a startup and you want to write an SDK so people can start using your API. So if you're writing an SDK for GitHub, Slack, HipChat, DigitalOcean, or whatever, you want to use an HTTP client. What do you do? You start writing your package, your SDK client, uh, your SDK, um, and you need an HTTP client. Ri you type into your terminal, compose the require, guzzle HTTP slash guzzle, because we all want to use guzzle. But some people will cry. They won't use your SDK. Why? Because they might be using guzzle version 5 instead of version 6, and that conflicts. You cannot install uh, two major uh, different versions of the same package. It's not possible in PHP. Or maybe they're using Zen's HTTP client. So they won't be able to use your SDK. How can you solve this? You can solve this by decoupling from the HTTP client. So there's a couple of HTTP clients out there that are not using PSR7 request objects. Not yet, because they're uh, they have been written before PSR7 was even a thing. So, decoupling from the HTTP client. How should we do this? Interfaces. It's all about interfaces. Let's say there's an interface called HTTP adapter, which is an adapter so you can wrap any type of HTTP client and pass it on a PSR7 request object and get a res uh, response object back. Actually, there's already a thing for that. It's called php-http slash httpplug. A lot of pptt, it's hard to pronounce. So php http -HTTP plug. Cool. What do we do if we're writing an SDK? We should edit our compose.json file manually, sorry. Uh, with, we should add to the require block that a php HTTP client dash implementation, rec uh, recognize the dash implementation. We've seen that with uh, PSR slash HTTP message implementation. So it's a virtual package. We, c we require people that install our SDK to also install a package that provides this implementation. So if we create an actual implementation of that, like for Guzzle 6, then we add to the composer.json file a provide block. And this provide block will have a php http slash client implementation tag. So composer, composer will know that this package actually provides an implementation for the interfaces inside the client package. Good. So there's a couple of adapters for that. There's Guzzle 6, Guzzle 5, there's all, all, already a React adapter, a socket client, a curl client, and a mock client. That's useful for testing. But all the others, technically, you can write those. You can add those. If you're using Zen 2, you can write your own adapter for it. So uh, imagine I'm a user. I'm using your SDK. Um, it says here, require your awesome SDK. Uh, but also, I'm stuck to Guzzle 5 for now. What should I do? Right now, I can already start using your awesome SDK by also installing the PHP HTTP Guzzle 5 adapter, which is cool. I can still use Guzzle 5. I don't have to upgrade my application. Uh, I don't have to upgrade my bindings to my IOC container. Uh, I just have to add this adapter wrap Guzzle version 5 in it, and then give it, up, uh, give it to my SDK. Super awesome. What if uh, a couple of weeks down the road, your employer says, here's a week time to res resolve all those uh, dependencies and refactor the application so that it now you can use Guzzle version 6? OK, you write some code, and you change the usage of Guzzle so you can use Guzzle 6 instead of Guzzle 5. But what should you, you do with the Guzzle 5 adapter? Easy. You could swap out Guzzle 5 with version 6, and you swap out Guzzle 5 adapter with Guzzle 6 adapter. Super easy. That's decoupling, how it should be. This is how your awesome SDK client looks like, uh, or at least the constructor. Uh, it has a constructor which uh, takes a, 
um, HTTP adapter interface object. In this case, it's a Guzzle 6 adapter, which will take, which will wrap a Guzzle 6 client. Super cool. That's decoupling. Everyone's happy. Everyone is using your SDK, and your boss is happy too. Now, um, we're all developers, at least I think. Um, and we, most of us use Symfony or Symfony related stuff like Laravel or whatever, Slim or uh, micro framework that's Symfony based. So, what about existing Symfony request and response objects? Can we still use them? Yes, of course we can. Do we have to refactor our entire application to use PSR7 request and response objects? No, we don't. We can use this bridge package, the Symfony PSR HTTP message bridge package, which will conveniently um, convert your request and response objects back and forth to PSR7 request and response objects. Super easy. Um, in fact, uh, it's type hinted as PSR HTTP message request interface and response interface, but actually it will return Zen's implementation. Good to know. But you can still type in it as a PSR request interface object. Cool. What about middlewares? In your applications, your current applications, um, uh, Symfony applications have uh, a notice of something called HTTP kernel. Anyone familiar with HTTP kernels? Only a few hands, okay. So a kernel is actually um, Imagine your application as an onion. This is the onion graph. So each layer doesn't need to know what's inside the other, uh, yeah, itself. So each layer just knows the next layer is an HTTP kernel. What it does, what it actually does, it doesn't matter. It just passes on the request object, optionally changes it before passing it on to the next layer, and after it, get it, it, it gets a response object back, it can optionally, again, alter the response object and pass it on to the index.php script, which will eventually um, render this response. So there's a couple of implementations, or there's a couple of possibilities with this. Uh, you can write a session layer, or an authentication layer, or uh, let's say a throttling layer. If a lot of people are uh, requesting your API and you want to put an API, lim uh, API limiter on it, you can do that in a layer for your application. It doesn't need to know what your application does. It can just uh, reject people from uh, requesting stuff by limiting the amount of requests per minute or per hour or whatever. So this notion uh, is also available in PSR7. Uh, a, cu a couple of uh, bright minds have defined an interface for a callable middleware in, in the PSR7 request uh, world, uh, and it's like this. It's a function which takes three arguments. The first is the request interface, the second is the response interface object, and the last one is the callable, the next, the next middleware. It doesn't need to know how, what it looks like, it's just a callable. So, if you're implementing this, you can alter the request before sending it off to the next middleware, if you want to, you don't have to, and you can also alter the response. After you got it back from the previous middleware, you can alter it before sending it back to the, in the, to the previous middleware. You, don't, you, also, you also don't have to know what the previous middleware is. Um, there's a couple of implement, implementation usages for this uh, pattern of application development. Uh, you can have one for uh, middleware for session, for logging, for authentication, for caching, for firewalls, for uh, cross-site uh, headers, for throttling, um, and also for uh, robots.txt file. Robots.txt file, why is that not just a file? Uh, maybe your application runs in different environments, like staging or production. You don't want your, uh, you don't want Google to, uh, yeah, search your site if it's just in staging. You don't want it to be indexed. 
And that's why you can add a simple layer around your application, which will catch that. If it's a robot.txt request, it will send back, no, this is staging, don't index me. Or if it's production, it can say, yeah, go on, index everything. So that's a pretty useful uh, middleware, in my opinion. It's just an opinion. So if, you're used, if you are used to Symfony application development, you might have heard about the Symfony kernel. Um, it is extended by the stack PHP middleware um, group or organization. So you can use any type of stack PHP middleware with any type of Symfony HTTP application. But what about PSR7 requests? Cool, there's a bridge for that. So this guy, Hack, I don't know how to pronounce, H4C, H4C, I don't know how to pronounce that, hack slash stack PSR7 bridge, uses the Symfony PSR7 bridge um, to convert between Symfony and PSR7 request and response objects, pass it on to the next middleware, which may be a Symfony middleware or a PSR7 middleware. It doesn't have to know. You can, um, you can conveniently um, build up your entire application with PSR7 middlewares or Symfony middlewares uh, or Symfony cores, your actual application, it's the Symfony core, or um, something like Leak Router, which is a PSR7 core application. Uh, you can conveniently uh, model your em entire application with those uh, two types of uh, middlewares. Cool. So it's a conversion between stack middlewares and PSR7 middlewares. As a recap for this last chapter, oh, it's already the last chapter. Okay. Uh, as a recap, um, I talked about decoupling the HTTP client by using the HTTP adapter. I talked about Symfony objects and how to convert to PSR7 object and back. And I also talked about application middlewares. These are also middlewares like Guzzle middlewares, but somewhat different. Cool. First chapter was PSR, second one was Guzzle, and the third one was m how to use PSR7 in your current applications. Cool. Time for questions. We have plenty of time. I won't go home before I got two questions. Please? No, not. I demand questions. Sure. Well, uh, hello. Uh, why did they decide to make it immutable for the response object? Uh, I wasn't there when it was decided, but I'm happy they decided it. Um, I can't speak on their behalf. Sorry. I can see question marks on some people's faces. So there are some questions. Yes. Can we get the mic over there? Hi. Uh, I Hi. wanted to ask if you know why streams were put in the middle of all those things. Uh, what is the added value there? Why yeah. aren't we doing like with the middleware is just uh, every request results in response? Yeah. But now there are streams in between. So well, what's the added value there? Um, it's actually a matter of performance. You can, I tried this and I could download an entire three gigabyte ISO file of Ubuntu uh, without loading it all into memory. We can actually now efficiently download stuff with PHP without bloating the memory. So it's pretty useful, but you might think, oh no, I don't want to use seek and read and is readable and all those methods. There's also a to string method, which will conveniently put all the data into one blob of data or one string and give it you back in one variable. So you don't have to use the streams. You can conveniently <coughs> cast it to a string. Is that okay for you? Is that an answer to your question as well? Okay. Could be. Yes, in the back.
Um, I think your question is if you're building an HTTP application, right? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're already using Symfony request and response objects? Yeah. Then I would suggest using the bridge package. So whenever you need a PSR7 object, you can transform a Symfony object to the corresponding PSR7 object. Um, if you are not using Symfony already, you can use Zend package. The Zend package has, let me see if I can, so, Christ, okay, right here. In index.php file, you can see that, let me zoom in. We have a request factory right here, which has a static method from globals, which will return a server request interface object. So if you're not already using uh, Symfony uh, to create a, a request object from globals, I suggest using the Zend package. Uh, Guzzle doesn't have this, so you're actually forced to use the Zend implementation. But I suggest using this. Is that an answer to your question? Yeah, yeah, understood, thanks. Well, because uh, we use Symfony, I see that uh, Guzzle is just uh, in active development, so the project is not dying. Yeah. I think Gazo is the best then. Yeah, thanks. Gazo is what? Uh, Gazo suits the best. I mean, it's yeah. inactive development, so in future it should be keep polishing, so it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have to warn you because Gazo PSR7 doesn't have any server request interface implementation. So if you want to access the super globals, you have to use the Zend implementation. Yeah, okay? Got it. Got it. Thanks. More questions? Hi, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was actually came in late, so apologies if this has already been covered. No problem. Um, but am I right in saying that PSR7 only defines interfaces yes. and, and no code? Exactly. So if you want to actually send an HTTP request, you have to use Guzzle or something else even to send yeah, a PSR standard. It doesn't, it doesn't even define uh, HTTP clients. It just defines data object interfaces. So it doesn't define... An, uh, uh, a base for an application or for an HTTP client. It just for the, uh, it just holds the data, which represents your uh, message, the message you send over the HTTP protocol. Protocol. That's okay. the only thing that's defined in PSR, uh, the PSR package. But okay, there's a so whole lot of packages that use it. Sure. So things. if you want to actually send a request, there's no PSR7 standard for a, for a client as such, just for the requests themselves? No, but there's an abstracted um, interface, so you can wrap, it, wrap existing HTTP clients to use PSR7. Okay, thank you. Okay. Wait, there's one thing I wanted to add to that. Can't remember, sorry. Oh, have you seen this? I made a middleware where I use an environment variable, which is the GitHub token, to add authorization to every request I send off to the API of GitHub. So it, that's also a middleware. I could have done this um, inside every single uh, controller, but I decided to inject it into the causal client before injecting it into the controller. So you can do anything with, uh, with middlewares. Okay, no more questions? Oh, one, two. Yes. Do you have anything with the Google custom source and being custom source as well? Like... Um, Sorry? Well, uh, maybe um, I'm taking in a other way, but um, if I need to make a, you know, um, HTTP request to Google custom source, and being custom source. Is that, no, not familiar to me. Is that HTTP? Yeah, it, it is. Um, 
then you should be able to use this. Um, so the credential, like for example here, you are using Git, right? So the credential you're passing is, is that like is this the API key? Normally Google and Bing, they use um, two, two, two type of credential. One is API key, the other is like client ID sort of thing. Yeah, you can, you can add so can any you? header or whatever, how it's modeled by Google or whatever service. You can even... Um, you can even adjust this client to use client certificates and all of that. So it's perfectly possible. Okay, um, thanks. There was one more right here, yeah. Not a question. Okay. I waited at the last for that reason. I um, found your mm, examples quite interesting. Are your slides available anywhere? Uh, or your my slides, slides are they available yes, from anywhere? Yes, on speakerdeck.com slash my username. Um, I will... Wait. <laughs> There's a joined-in link. You can leave feedback. And on that joined-in link, there will be a link to my sites. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.